Okay, there's the 99, and what you see underneath it is going to be my board for the tote bag. Um, that's actually a plastic, lightweight, but very sturdy um, cutting board. And you can see by the, um, I use it for making crayons. Uh, but I have other wooden ones that are heavier that I can use for the crayons. And the areas of the machine just fit on it. Just fit. So at the very least, I'll put a sleeve on it and put it in the tote bag. And um, I'll probably, um, if I take the hand crank off, I'll have that in a little lunch bag or something that will keep the machine from shifting around. But that will give a little bit more support to the bottom of the tote bag. Um, you know, because the 99 is kind of a heavy machine. I don't want it to ruin uh, the bottom of the tote bag. So this will add some more support, but it's much lighter than, say, plywood would have been. Um, so it won't add much weight to it. Okay, I have one more machine to kind of um, test out here. I also have the 237s. Um, I think they're going to be at least 25 pounds without a motor, close to 30 with a motor. But this is um, another Cadillac. This is the Singer 500A. It's a slant shank machine, so a lot of my other attachments will not fit it. Um, but this is like the the top of the line. My mother had one of these when I was about 16 and uh, she didn't have a manual and of course there was no uh, find it online so she had trouble figuring out um, how to change the stitch patterns this is all about stitch patterns some of it is in the lid and a lot of times you'll find the lid missing um, this can do twin needle so you have two inner spool pens. This is the third pen that can go on the top like that. There is the cam stack and I have an arrowhead cam in there right now. Um, and to change the knobs, you pull the brown one out to shift it. And you push the gold one in to shift it. Whoops. Um, Instead of um, lowering the feed dogs, and I forget, I haven't used this machine in a while, the plate moves. This is uh, for straight and zigzag, um, darning, and remove the plate to clean everything out. So I, instead of like on a 15 where you drop the feed dogs, um, you can move this lever to darning and it'll raise the plate so that you can do darning. It's like if, if I remember correctly. I haven't used this in a while because... Let's just see what it does. Yeah, you, you may not be able to tell, but it's raising the plate. Um, well, because of the surgery, uh, um, the surgery kind of got in the way of everything, um, and I'm kind of behind not only on my quilting, but also on my embroidering. And this, um, this is the face mask I'm making, but these are some of the stitch patterns. So I've had a couple of these in the, over the years, and um, this presser foot also has just a little bit of play in it. But watch this. If I didn't, I might have changed the pattern when I moved the knobs. So, in that case, let's go slow by hand. See how there's clearance? It may not, maybe there you can see. On the 6212, it was closer than that when it made um, the zigzag stitch.
so that's one of the pattern stitches and I'm, I've got beige thread in it so you can't really see um, but yes it did just go right back to the same stitch I was making it's a beautiful machine um, I just weighed it on a scale um, and picking it up like this and putting it on a scale it weighs exactly 22 pounds much bigger than the 99 um, at least the size of the brother and um, has a lot more functions a lot of people get intimidated by them um, because they can seem confusing but they're really not and um, I'm not going to go into how you choose the patterns and everything. You really need the manual on this one. Um, it's better to learn the machine through the manual with this one. But I'm going to use it today to make a face mask. I will test it out on, on how thick it will go. It doesn't look like I'm going to have a center needle position issue. Um, it also has a tote bag like the one I just gave to the 99. So potentially, I guess I could be dragging this around. And this is just an example of how the 500A runs. I've got it set now um, to do the arrowhead stitch. I have most of the cams, uh, the top hat, I call them top hat cams, that go in this. Um, I'm missing just a couple of them, I think. I did also get a new foot pedal and this one is a clam shape and because I'm standing um, the way I'm pushing pushing down is a little funny. Like I said, a Cadillac. And there's the arrowhead stitch. Okay, now um, I've got the 500A plugged in and ready to go. And um, while I've been testing the different machines today, I actually have had um, a face mask to finish. Um, so I'm going to do that with this machine now. Um, I think I plugged the wrong thing in. Nope, I did something. This was on a few minutes ago. Okay, what it was is the place that the plug goes into the machine was a little bit loose. The plug was loose there. And um, actually, that's a good thing to mention because um, these plugs, the way they set them up, the um, plastic part is shaped and it only fits in there one way. And yet, on this machine, it makes the cords go backwards. And of course, there's, you know, it's on the table. So this is why, um, even though this one has a bottom on it and it's portable, um, sometimes they're better off in a case, I mean a cabinet. And I do have a cabinet um, that would take this machine. In fact, I have the cabinet that my mother's original 500A was in. Um, but anyway, if this were in the cabinet, that wouldn't happen because the cord would just naturally go backwards. But when it's on the table, you might run into that. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this. <coughs> now, I had said that on my five layer masks, <coughs> I was doing two layers of top stitching um, so that people I give the mask to can tell which are uh, two layer and which are five layer. I could use the stitch cams and put the second row of top stitching in a decorative stitch and it would it would make the face mask pretty pretty er mm. 
Now this foot pedal, like I said, is a clam shell shape. And it's taller than the other foot pedals. And this is um, a very smooth running machine. As I said, I've had a couple of them. And um, they're extremely um, finely engineered. So if something is out of whack, um, you can usually tell. Now, I happen to have a snow boots on. Um, so, and the snow boots don't bend very easily, which is why uh, it seems like I'm going slow. It's just me using the foot pedal the way I'm using it. Now this is an extremely powerful machine and um, because I have the 1591 which sometimes um, in their long lives you might have to replace a motor on that and it's a potted motor um, I actually have a spare motor for the 1591 I also looked into that uh, what I would have to do if I needed to replace the motor on this and um, it's actually much easier um, than the 1591. I can't remember exactly, but I think you just drop it out, um, disconnect something, put the new motor in, connect it, and pop it up again. So even that's a possibility if it ever happened. I'm pretty sure the year on this one is 1962. I could be I could be wrong. I'm trying to remember. Um, I think they were made 1960 to 62. So this is five layers that it's sewing through without a problem. And it's one of the reasons I always like these machines, is because they're extremely strong and heavy duty, even though they're made of aluminum. And um, at the same time, they're finely engineered and really just, a, um, once you get used to the different controls, I mean, they're just a really nice machine to use. Uh, different from a 1591 or a 15, not only, um, well, really because they take um, all of the different stitches and incorporate them into anything you want to make. Um, so that's a real added bonus with this machine. And I'm thinking, you know, it weighs the same as the 99. And what I could actually do is keep the two of them in the two tote bags. And um, I should be able to pick up either one. And then I would have um, the hand crank that would take all of the different um, button, button holders and, and things, those attachments that I have. And then this one could do the decorative stitching, if nothing else. Um, I do have a basic set of attachments for this. I just don't have uh, the button holder. Um, I forget. Um, years ago when I had another one, I had everything for it. And I can't remember if there was something else 
there's a monogrammer um, that comes with it, but because it does all the fancy stitches, it, it didn't come with it when, when it was sold, but there's a monogrammer that will fit it. And because it comes with all the fancy stitches, I always figured I could just do the monogram with the um, stitch cams. So there's a five layer mask um, that I now just have to put the nose bridge in and finish. And um, I already know that this won't have any problem at all going through these five layers, um, even with one of the stitch cams working. So this is now um, a possibility in addition to the 99. Um, and this machine is, it's also complicated, but it's, um, it's very finely engineered. Um, I, I don't think that I would use it in the way where, you know, it's like a, um, a workhorse. I mean, it, it is. I don't think I'd use it that way. I think I'd use it as a very fine sewing machine. There's the 500A, and um, on the table is the face mask I'm almost done with. And um, there's a little bit of a temptation with the 500A, and you see it in the stitches. If you have a machine that can do that, you don't need to do it yourself. Um, which brings us to the little Model 20s. And one thing I've always felt the Model 20s do, because they're somewhat limited in how many layers they can go through, um, I think they always kick you to doing it yourself. Um, for example, on that face mask, I have to do the center seam. And uh, the Model 20 wouldn't go through that easily. Um, so I would have to hand sew it if all I had was a Model 20. But I want to show you something I'm going to be doing today. This is a 1959 Singer Model 20 case. Case and machine and everything weighs 3 pounds. So, I'm going to change my thinking about Model 20s. What I've been thinking is that, um, one, they're mainly for piecing, and they will go through maybe three layers. Um, that they're simple, that they don't do uh, zigzag, all, all kinds of things they don't do. But at the same time, um, hand sewing is a skill all in itself. So the fact that... Um, well, just the example with piecing. If I were to piece a nine patch and then hand quilt it, um, I mean, that's a combination of the skills. Whereas when you do everything by machine, you lose that aspect of hand sewing. Um, I just picked up the Spartan because it's just like the 99, only I wouldn't have to worry about ruining the finish. And um, I can't, I can't, it's too heavy. I, I can't be picking up the heavier machine, so um, I'm going to use the Model 20s for a few days and do what I can't do on the Model 20, I'm going to do by hand, and I'm going to see how that works for me. In the meantime, um, the 99 as a hand crank will be the big machine, and um, it may end up on the kitchen table for anything that I can't do with the Model 20, such as a face mask or something. Um, a lot of people think that, oh, if you don't have um, a really good sewing machine and you have to do it by hand, what a punishment that is. And it really isn't. Most of my life, the embroidery has all been by hand. And the quilting has all been by hand. Um, it was fairly recently when I had to make a lot of quilts and make them quickly that I switched to machine quilting. Before that, like all the quilts I made for my family, all the quilts I've made for myself, most are hand quilted. And um, it's not a punishment. It's, it's a different way of doing things. 
um, but it's also handmade. So we have to recognize that what sewing machines do is make it easier for everybody. Anybody can sew, but anybody can sew anyway with a needle and thread. It's just that it takes longer and our society is geared toward let's do it fast and let's do it, um, you know, so we can get on to the next thing. So I have to change my thinking simply because of the surgery and I can't be picking up the big machines anymore. So we're, now my sewing adventure is going to be Model 20s for a few days anyway. Now I also want to explain a perfect project that I already needed to do anyway um, that kind of puts the sewing machines in perspective. I have currently on the windows knitted panels. Um, I took all my regular curtains down because I, I'm still moving and this is becoming the longest move in history. Um, so I took my regular curtains down and I put up knitted panels just for privacy. And I have knitting loom, um, many knitting looms and knitting boards. And so my plan is to take my hand spun wool and make knitted panels for the windows um, for insulation but also for privacy. So the other side of that, many of you may have seen my sweater quilt video, um, the other side of that is using fabric on the inside of the panel, what faces the room, um, to make curtains. So, um, and then you can either um, clip these to a curtain rod or you can just uh, use suction cups to hang them up. So anyway, it's a way to make insulated private curtains. And um, of course, many of my machines do heavy duty things. The 1588 and the 1591 could stitch that all together, a layer of knitting and a layer of fabric without a problem. Um, the 1588 and the treadle would be especially good for that. The, but the aspect of a Model 20 and having just a little, more or less a piecing machine, or I could make aprons, I could make um, single panel kernel curtains, I can do a lot with the Model 20. But with that being a main project that I have to get finished, um, the Model 20 comes in, if I make nine patches, and then sew four nine patches together, I basically have the size of a curtain panel. But then I would be using the knitted panel instead of backing and batting, and I would be making um, curtains that are pieced on one side and knitted wool on the other side. Um, and it's kind of a, you know, an odd, different way to make curtains when you can just buy fabric and zip them up on a machine. Um, but in my case, I really want that um, almost solid privacy on the bottom half of the windows. Now I can always put my other curtains back up and um, they would be in addition to whatever these insulation panels are for the windows. Part of that is the heat bill. Right now I have a cathedral ceiling and the heat goes right out the windows. Um, so part of it is because of that. But even if I'm in a much smaller apartment, um, just the privacy aspect of it where, you know, nobody can look in at all. Um, I like, and you don't get that with normal curtain panels. I've had Venetian blinds in the past and you do get it with that but they're a real pain to clean. So you can take a knitted and fabric panel and just throw it in the washer, just like you would any other curtain. So the Model 20, not doing everything you want it to do, in my case will be fine because I can use it to piece um, 
one of my favorite ways of making a quilt is just a scrap patchwork quilt. And so I can have patchwork on the windows and then on the outside people will see white or gray hand spun wool. Um, so it'll just look like, you know, a wool panel to anybody outside. But on the inside, it'll be my continuing history of sewing, um, pieced with a Model 20 if I need to piece it, or um, quilted by hand. Because I can put, um, you can use any kind of thread, you don't have to buy expensive quilting thread, but you can quilt on a, say you do white wool with muslin, then you can quilt a whole scene of anything you want or in the kitchen you could put grapes or um, cherries or fruit or a fruit basket so that is where the skill kind of becomes art but it also becomes personal and you're choosing exactly what you want your home to be like which is similar to going to a fabric store and paying twenty dollars a yard for your favorite fabric um, so this is kind of the poor man's way to do it, but all along in our sewing history, hand sewing has had that advantage, that hand tailoring. If you go to have a handmade suit made today, um, you know, we're talking a couple of thousand dollars, as opposed to 400 maybe in a store. So the hand tailoring and the hand sewing is still... Um, the top of the line over and above the Cadillac of machines. Machines can break. You know, as long as you can move a thread and a needle, you can do anything. <laughs>